have another exciting talk about telecommunications internal versus cost variability. Susanna Kosti. Um, so I'm, this talk, um, I'm going to focus actually not on all teleconnections, but uh, specifically on the two teleconnections. And uh, one, the first one is, uh, um, let's go here. Oh. Okay. Uh, the first one is uh, actually the, probably the first teleconnections that has been uh, studied and uh, uh, found, uh, which is uh, the teleconnection between <coughs> El Nino and uh, the PNA or PNA-like pattern, basically uh, linking uh, the anomaly SSTs in the Equatorial Pacific, the warm anomaly SST in the Equatorial Pacific during El Nino. Uh, with uh, the <coughs> circulation on um, uh, the North America and uh, Pacific North America. And uh, basically, this is uh, in, uh, in the figure we, uh, you can see this is a map in the DJF, and there are uh, ADI SST between 1880 to 2011, and uh, it's uh, um, a special com uh, composite. Uh, taking uh, the Nino 3.4 anomaly and compositing uh, with uh, uh, <coughs> the SSDs all around the globe, the surface temperature and uh, the uh, mean sea level pressure that you can see in, uh, in the contour. So this is a typical pattern uh, of uh, <coughs> linking these anomalies on, on the Pacific with um, what happens in, in the circulation and uh, in, the, in the surface temperature. So one uh, uh, can, uh, the first question can be, well, uh, when, uh, we, uh, when we have a climate simulation, basically one of the way of uh, uh, um, assessing the ability of a climate model to reproduce the, the correctly or uh, satisfactory enough the cli climate is uh, uh, just to assess how well it is able to represent the teleconnections. And uh, actually, this is an example from one ensemble member from uh, uh, um, <coughs> integration done with the easy Earth model. It is an historical simulation in more or less in the same period as uh, in uh, the other ISSTs. And uh, we can see that actually in this case, uh, 130, uh, 140 uh, years, basically the teleconnection is very well reproduced. We can see the, the centers in, uh, in, the North, in, uh, in North America, the anomalies in, uh, in the temperatures that are quite, quite well uh, simulated. And probably there is some uh, mismatch, something quite different, but uh, in, uh, in the signal over the Eurasia. So let's say we have uh, one ensemble members with enough years and one can say that, that okay, it's, uh, it's quite well reproduced. However, we, in uh, this case we had more than one ensemble members and there are other ensemble members who are, uh, which are totally equivalent in the sense that uh, they have the same model and uh, the same forcing. And once, for example, you look at these other members of the, of, uh, from uh, <coughs> the same uh, model, and uh, you can see that there is already some uh, differences. For example, uh, these um, SS, um, surface temperature anomalies uh, in uh, uh, eastern, uh, north, uh, western of, um, of uh, North America is quite different. And uh, there are also other features that are not actually the same. And uh, looking at other ensemble members, you can see that uh, there are all them are slightly different. And for example, in this case that I wanted to point is number five. Actually, basically, we don't have any more the teleconnection. We don't have the PNA teleconnection in the mean sea level pressure. Almost disappeared. And actually, it's 
is the same uh, equivalent ensemble member with the same condition. It's a couple integrations with the same model, with the same forcing, and uh, it's not even a short integration because it's 140 years integration. So basically, it's, uh, the, my point is, is uh, what we should expect in terms of uh, reproduci reproducibility. It's, it, it's um, what we should expect. Uh, what, what is uh, the natural variability? Is the natural variability in uh, 130 years of observation uh, well sampled, or there is something more? Or rather, are the models which exhibit too much variability. They are too sensitive to something that we don't know. This is one uh, initial point that it's about this uh, uh, El Nino PNA. But I will uh, warn you that I won't show any result from couple models because I, I, I wanted to keep it simple. So basically, what I'm going to show you uh, later on is some results from AMIP integrations. So the AMIP integration, we reduce the degree of freedom because the SSDs are always the same, and there are only ensemble members with uh, <coughs> uh, uh, only uh, basically the atmosphere, which is different. But the forcing coming uh, from uh, the radiative forcing, which is basically semi-5, and uh, the forcing coming from SSDs is actually the same. Uh, so that is the first teleconnection that uh, I try to, uh, to to speak about, and the second is something quite different. Is let's go to the Atlantic, and uh, this is uh, <coughs> Atlantic multi-decadal variability or Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, and uh, which is uh, here you can see from. Um, the ADSSTs, these oscillations, basically the M uh, this index, which is the AMV index, uh, is obtained taking the early anomalies of the North Atlantic SSTs in the, um, uh, in the, the northern part of the North Atlantic and uh, subtracting just to, to get out of the, of the climate sig signal of the trend of, um, over uh, the SST is basically uh, the 10 year running mean of the global SSTs. This, has, uh, this definition is uh, well, uh, the well known definition by Trembert and Shea in 2006. Uh, so, this is this uh, uh, oscillation, and uh, over there we can see the map. How does it, it appear in, 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 the, in the North Atlantic, the, the anomaly of the SSTs in the North Atlantic? Uh, in a recent paper uh, in 2014, on uh, environmental research letter, um, uh, Pengs and Magzun, uh, Mag Magnu, Magnus Doptir, a uh, difficult Swedish name to pronounce for an Italian, uh, actually showed that they, analy they, they look at the sensitivity of the Euro-Atlantic weather regimes to the uh, AMO. And they uh, took uh, uh, reanalysis, one of these uh, cent um, <coughs> century reanalysis, in particular they took the 20th century reanalysis by um, uh, the American 20th century reanalysis, and uh, uh, they looked at the variation of the frequency in uh, the uh, Euro Atlantic weather regimes, which are the blocking, uh, the Atlantic Ridge, you can see here, the, and the two phases of, of NAO, NAO plus and NAO minus. And basically, they looked in, in uh, winter and also splitting the winter in uh, the early winter and in the second half of the winter. And they, they look at the how the frequency of the uh, Air Atlantic re weather regime is modulated by the phases of AMO. And actually, they found that, for example, it is uh, in, in the case of the blocking and the two phases of NIO, there is a, <coughs> a sensitivity to what well, which is expected, actually, because <laughs> there is a change uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the SSTs and the frequency of weather regime. In particular, the blocking frequencies and negative NIO frequencies uh, increase uh, with the AMV uh, positive with the warm SSTs and decrease with the uh, MV negative and uh, for the NAO plus uh, is the, the other way around. 
Also, they looked at a, a model simulation that is uh, with the CM5, <coughs> and to see if the model was able to reproduce this, this behavior. And actually, what they found that they didn't find anything for the blocking, and probably because, uh, uh, as many models, the blocking is not well uh, reproduced or simulated in. Uh, uh, in uh, climate models, but they, they found uh, a similar sensitivity uh, for the two phases of NaO plus and minus. So basically, and also, uh, we, uh, my uh, colleague uh, uh, Paolo Davini, uh, Jos von Arderberg, which is in, in the audience, and myself, uh, did an experiment with this year in uh, version 3.1 sensitivity experiment with uh, uh, having only uh, changing um, basically the SSTs over the North Atlantic and with positive and negative SSTs over the uh, anomalies over, over the North Atlantic to see um, in EMIP mode, so EMIP sensitivity experiments, to see if there was the same, we found, if we could find the same signal as the one of Pegnus and Margaretine and actually this is uh, uh, as far as the blocking is concerned, and uh, this is a bidimensional blocking uh, indices uh, for the reanalysis in, in the contour. And uh, instead, uh, you can see in, um, in shading uh, the difference between the control error interim and the reanalysis, showing that actually the model error uh, is here. Uh, sorry, era interim and this year, uh, and uh, showing that the model actually has uh, underestimated the, the blocking over the Pacific, but uh, as a good sort of uh, um, <coughs> representation of uh, both of the Greenland blocking and uh, uh, for the Scandinavian blocking. So this is the model, and then we can see here the sensitivities to the uh, North Atlantic uh, temperature. Uh, so to the MV, and in this case, uh, when uh, all the North Atlantic from, uh, from uh, zero, for five uh, north to, <coughs> to the 70 north, uh, uh, there has um, been forced with a positive uh, anomaly. And one can see here that uh, we have more blocking, basically, in, uh, in the Greenland and uh, uh, over... Um, Scandinavian and, and UK, which is consistent with what was found previously, and uh, also in the reanalysis. What is in this paper interesting is, is that uh, if instead of forcing all the North Atlantic with, uh, um, with a positive anomaly and a negative anomaly similar to AMO, we, take, uh, we force only the tropical part of, of, of the Atlantic. So basically keeping uh, uh, the climatological SST on the North Atlantic, actually we found the same, exactly the same single. So in this paper we conclude that uh, we try to find the mechanism which is a bit dif different from the one of Marbut. Ah yeah, this is one when one forced only the extratropical, basically there is nothing. But this might be uh, a feature of, uh, of the model of, of, uh, of this year. So, said that, uh, in, uh, in this presentation, I would like to try to investigate these questions. So first, okay, how well did this teleconnection pattern? So basically, uh, this uh, sensitivity to AMO and uh, this uh, PNA, uh, <coughs> El Nino teleconnection is reproduced by the model. And the second, what is the degree of representation reproducibility of uh, these teleconnection patterns in uh, sister simulations, so basically in different ensemble members. And uh, last, uh, if there are some factors that can uh, in a way weaken or strengthen the tele a, t a given teleconnection pattern. So basically if there are external factor or maybe noise that can in a, in a way strengthen or uh, weaken the teleconnection pattern. And uh, what uh, the experiments that we use is a part of a big experiment which has been conducted under a PRACE uh, grant. And the experiment has been led by Yost and has been uh, conducted in collaboration also with uh, Oxford University. 
And uh, in this experiment, uh, which was aimed uh, actually to investigate the sensitivity of the climate to the <coughs> model resolution and the stochastic physics uh, in the model, uh, as a lot of the integrations, most of them AMIP integration and a few uh, couple integrations. Uh, here you can see, well, basically a summary of the experiments. So uh, we focused on the 30 year in the present day, and there are also uh, integration, the same integration for the future scenarios, RCP 8.5. Um, uh, there are five different resolutions for T1 finite to uh, T255. Uh, we have 10 ensemble member with or without stochastic physics. And for the higher resolution, of course, the number of, of ensemble members that you were able to reproduce decreases. And uh, at the highest resolution, actually, we, uh, we perform only one integration uh, with stochastic physics and without stochastic physics. This is for the experiment. And uh, actually, it is the data set of this experiment are available, are in a thread server, uh, and uh, can be if used for uh, research. And we are happy, uh, these the people, they sort of wanted to study something using this data set. Uh, here, I, I just focus on this small part of the experiment. So basically, the 10 ensemble member without stochastic physics, all the same in T255, AMIP. Uh, so first, uh, first question, how well uh, is the Earth, uh, AMIP simulation, are able to reproduce the observed weather regimes. On the left, you can see this, the weather regimes that I, I showed before, and uh, they are basically um, uh, the uh, NEO, uh, the, the first one on, on, uh, on the left, the positive NAO, the blocking, uh, the Scandinavian blocking, the Atlantic Ridge, and uh, negative NAO. As in NSEP analysis, uh, in uh, era interim are absolutely the same. Uh, not, not, not. And here is how they are reproduced in each year, uh, T255. Uh, I, it's not written here, but the special correlation, the average of special correlations between these patterns and the patterns in NSEP is very high, is more than 0.95. And so we can be really satisfied for, uh, for this simulation. And uh, here one can see basically from in, in the years how is, in, uh, in, uh, we can see here the frequency, how is the, the interannual variability, interensemble variability. And uh, basically one can see a lot of noise. However, now we wanted to look at the uh, sensitivity of the frequency of these regimes to the Atlantic uh, to AMV, uh, AMV. Of course, in this period, because uh, the, our integration are only uh, 30, uh, 30 year long, uh, we don't have actually an oscillation of AMV, but it, there is just, we are on, on, on the ascending branch of uh, AMV. So it's more or less like a trend, but it's not a real trend because uh, basically the AMV index per se has been the trend that has been computed in a way that the trend, but we are just looking at this. So basically, you wanted to stratify the frequency uh, according to, to, the, to the phases of, uh, of uh, AMV. And this is how uh, AMV is like. So basically, uh, this is the correlation between the AMV signal with, uh, with um, the <coughs> all the SSTs uh, in, uh, in the period. OK? So then now, the result for observation. When uh, you take the observation and uh, you stratify and you look at the, how uh, varies the frequency of uh, the regimes according to the AMV, one, one find essentially what has been found already by <coughs> Pengs and Maxunotti. So basically, and uh, here you can see that basically the, di uh, the triangle are, uh, is uh, M AMV plus and uh, the dots are AMV minus. So all the regimes, uh, excluding the NO plus, increase their frequency during AMV plus and uh, the other way around with uh, um, NIO plus. So this is the 
this is what we found in, uh, in uh, the reanalysis. And now we wanted to see what, what about the model. Is the model uh, as sensitive as the reanalysis? And uh, of course, since we have a third year of the reanalysis, basically, we look separately at each one of the 10 ensemble members. So here are, are the four weather regimes. On the x-axis, you can see the number of the ensemble member for 0 to 9. And here you can read the, the, the patch, departure of the average frequency for each ensemble member for MV positive and negative. So basically, let's focus on NAO plus uh, just to. And uh, what we expect is actually that having uh, um, um, less cases of uh, uh, NIO, positive NIO, during uh, the AMV positive and on the other way around. And one can see there is a lot of variation between the ensemble members. Basically, some ensemble members, like ensemble member number zero or number seven, are very sensitive. So basically, here uh, you have a 6% uh, <coughs> in difference in, uh, in frequency, and other ensemble members are not sensitive at all. Basically, nothing happened. And all the ensemble members are the same, and there are 30 years, and they are forced by exactly the same SSDs. So in principle, uh, well, I don't know what someone else would have expected, uh, but I, I myself, I, I, could, I would not have expected such a variation. Or having some ensemble member totally insensitive, other ensemble members so sensitive. If one look at the other regimes, it's even more confused. And just to, to make things uh, slightly more clear, I would just put together uh, sort of the blocking regime. So there are NIO negative uh, and, uh, and the Euro Scandinavian blocking in uh, one uh, in one bunch. And uh, here is the Atlantic region. Basically, here one can see more or less the same behavior as, uh, as uh, in the analysis, only that there are some cases which are very sensitive, and some cases which are not so sensitive. So um, uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, what the, now the question is, uh, what are the possibly possible uh, uh, candidates that can amplify or inhibit this sensitivity to the AMV? And uh, we look to the positive anomaly of Eur Eur Eurasian snow depth that if uh, are in phase or out of phase with the uh, AMV, could possibly amplify, amplify or inhibit the sensitivity to the weather regimes. Another possible uh, uh, candidate is uh, the uh, temperature in the stratosphere. Basically, the temperatures in the stratosphere, we know that uh, uh, stratospheric warming events uh, can lead to NIO. Uh, negative. So if uh, we have more stratospheric warming events during uh, a period in which uh, also from SSDs we have a sort of a, um, <coughs> a, a push towards NIO uh, minus, then uh, we can amplify the, the signal or the other way around. So the idea is just uh, to look at these two possible uh, causes just split the ensemble in uh, five good ensembles, so the most sensitive to EMV, and uh, uh, five ensemble members which are the least sensitive uh, to the MV, and uh, just look at the difference between uh, between uh, in, in, in between uh, them in terms of snow depth, and uh, just to be simple, I just took the temperature at 50 hectopascal as a measure, as, a, as just a rough measure of the temperature of, of the stratosphere. And uh, so this is what uh, uh, we found for the Eurasian snow depth. Basically looking at the snow depth in, uh, in this area of Eurasia, which has been shown as very uh, uh, important for, uh, uh, especially at the beginning of the winter, late uh, autumn, at the beginning of the winter, uh, in triggering uh, um, uh, NAO uh, negative. I just look at the, at, uh, these are all the month of the year, and there are difference between uh, uh, um, uh, sensitive 
minus non-sensitive cases. And actually, in the case of uh, positive FB, one can see that uh, there is a positive anomaly in the winter of uh, the snow depth, actually. So snow depth could have helped to increase the, sensi uh, the sensitivity to uh, AMV plus. But uh, actually, it seems not having much effect on the sensitivity to uh, AMV minus. If I look at the, uh, instead of the stratosphere, basically this is the average temperature in, in the different months of the years for the five, uh, five good ensemble members minus the five bad ensemble members. And um, one can see that in this case, both phases of the AMV actually uh, they are sensitive. And uh, basically one can see that uh, uh, in the case of AMV minus, the, the, you have a negative anomaly of the temperature, so which is uh, basically related to having a, a, a colder stratosphere, which has more uh, related to have an intensification of, of the vortex, so uh, basically positive uh, NAO, which uh, which when this is in phase uh, with a, a negative phase of AMV can amplify this signal. And the same uh, on the other way around uh, for the NAO negative. So I have only uh, five minutes now. Quickly, I wanted to look basically at the other teleconnection, uh, which I said it's uh, Pacific North American teleconnection. And uh, one uh, can have here the observation these are the correlation between the frequency of uh, this cluster, which is the uh, Pacific North American cluster number one, which is very similar to a positive PNA. Uh, actually, it's more a Pacific draft because we have this draft, the Pacific, and with respect to to the positive PNA, all the structure is really shifted uh, uh, basically on uh, 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 eastward. And if one look at the, <coughs> uh, take the frequency uh, during the winter of this regime and does the correlation with SSTs, basically one finds this pattern in the observation. And this can be sort of a measure of, uh, of the teleconnection between the two. And so, what happened in the model? First of all, the mo is uh, the model able to reproduce exactly the same regimes? Well, the answer quickly is yes. You can see that the pattern is here in this uh, and, and SEP over there, so are quite, quite similar. And, uh, and now we will look if, in this case, so basically, in the model case, we can find this the same pattern as in the observation. And, uh, Actually, it depends. So basically, here we can see the same. So these are the patterns in the observation, which uh, we, we saw before. And these are the same. So remember that SSTs are the same in all the, in exactly in all the ensemble members, in all the integrations. And uh, these are different ensemble members. And uh, one can see that in some cases, it's really good. For example, let's compare uh, the observation with ensemble nine. They are practically identical. There is really, really, really uh, very good correlation. But in other cases, for example, ensemble zero, we don't, uh, the, the teleconnection is really, is really very weak. And uh, well, we can see different flavors of that. And that uh, it's a bit, was surprised, well, I was, in this case, really surprised because basically this is one uh, teleconnection that is, is really direct. We, we, we have basically these uh, changes in the uh, Rossby wave sources and, and, and then these waves is that ex uh, exciting uh, the PNA or the PNA like it's pattern. Yes, they are emiprans, so the SSDs are exactly the same in all the runs. So basically, it's something that, well, in principle, you don't expect. Well, I would have expected something really noisy in the Atlantic, but not in, in the Pacific. So let's th uh, look for, for uh, some uh, candidates of this difference. And again, the only thing that I could, uh, I could think is something related to the stratosphere, if there is, or, and uh, there are uh, 
papers. I, here I, 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 I put only in Zone and Scape 2009, but there is uh, uh, Cagnazza and Manzini in the, in the same year, just looking at the influence of the stratospheric warming, uh, basically on, uh, on uh, during El Nino, uh, amplifying or not the, uh, the res response uh, to El Nino in the mid latitudes. And uh, what in, uh, uh, in their case, in their model, basically they found that uh, stratospheric warming, uh, they help to have a better uh, response uh, to uh, El Nino. Uh, and a more recent study, which is uh, in 2015, uh, Richter et al., uh, this um, uh, group in uh, Ankar, uh, Clara Desert group, I think, uh, they look at, they had uh, Emmy Prance with uh, CM5, and um, they look uh, at the, the signal with stratospheric warming and without stratospheric warming. And uh, they found almost uh, a slightly a slight signal in the model, but I would say, in my view, that the signal in the observation is uh, the other way around. So basically, having a better answer in uh, in this case, the the, the the answer, not the answer, is the response. Sorry, <laughs> the response in this case without stratospheric warming than in this case with stratospheric warming. Well, they claim that the observation are are uh, are not. There are not many cases, of course. But then uh, let's look in, in the case of ECE Earth. So basically what I did is just as before, the five uh, more sensitive minus the, the five uh, least sensitive, uh, and uh, looking uh, <coughs> uh, again uh, at the, the Nino, winter, uh, Nino winters. And basically one can find that this is a signal which is not significant. However, if one takes the best one minus the worst one, actually there is a signal, which is this red line, pointing towards a, a better uh, teleconnection with a colder uh, temperature in the stratosphere, which, uh, of course, should be studied better because one ensemble member uh, is only 30 years and uh, one should look at something. Well. And uh, if one look actually at the teleconnection as they are, and these are the maps uh, similar to uh, the ones that I, I showed before, and this is uh, the, the, the best ensemble member, number nine, and over there there is the worst. And the one can see that, and the SSTs are obviously the same in, the, in this plot, uh, the surface temperature is not the same, so the temperature uh, over the, the, the land is different. But just focusing on, uh, on the signal of mean sea level pressure, basically uh, the signal is much, much stronger, of course, in, in, uh, in this case. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the signal over the Euro Atlantic is totally, uh, totally opposite, totally different. So, and I leave it the concluding remarks if uh, someone wants to read it, and I think I am most of the time. Okay.